Hey guys, it's uh, Professor Sinski at UNC Charlotte, and I uh, do a little grasshopper tutorial here for week two. This is part one. Just going to be talking about basic transforms, which is going to be a review um, of the stuff we covered last time. Okay, and to refresh your memory, a transform is a uh, is like a 3D term, which means to uh, move something or rotate something or scale something. Okay, and we looked at a couple of those uh, ideas last time. So. Just real quick, I'm going to go ahead and start off with something uh, like a polygon, so I can we can actually see what it is we're doing. Um, I'm going to start with a primitive, put a polygon uh, onto the stage here, and uh, I'm just going to do this. Is, let's see, uh, six-sided. I'm going to go ahead and set that to three-sided, and that's going to let me um, see some direction here. Okay, so I got basically a triangle. And that triangle has a base plane and some kind of radius, and again the number of sides three. Okay. <clears throat> and the triangle, uh, the the polygon gives us the polygon curve itself, and uh, that's what we're going to be manipulating. So, you know, real quick, the first one we did was move. And uh, if you remember, uh, move takes some geometry. So it doesn't even have to be a curve. It can be a it can be a service. It can be like a solid, which is a collection of services, it takes any kind of geometry. But in this case, it's taking um, a curve. And it wants a vector. Okay? And remember, there are different kinds of vectors, right? Um, there are, it takes any vector, but the ones we've looked at would be, you know, the Z vector. So we have a Z vector, uh, which is one we, we we're looking at in our in our lab session. And the Z vector, right, is moving something in the Z axis. And we can tell what axis is which by looking at the compass, you know, that's in the bottom of the screen here, right? That's gonna tell us that Z is up and down. Okay. Um, and Z takes a number and we can control that number. An easy way to control that number is through a number slider, right? Um, again, there are other ways that we'll talk about later, but the easiest way is just to just to input a simple number. So I'm gonna finish the slider off here. Mm. So you can see that that increases the magnitude of the uh, of the z vector, which then moves the uh, which then moves the geometry. And again, we have the original state of grasshopper, which is the polygon, and then the new state of that polygon that's been moved. So there are two states of that polygon uh, in this in the grasshopper sketch, and uh, we can do different things with those. Okay, so it's kind of like a copy. Uh, but not exactly, okay? And, you know, we can do different, you can do different vectors. Uh, so that's a Z vector. <clears throat> if you wanted to move something, you know, this way, back and forth, you could take uh, a Y vector, like a unit Y, right? And if I plug that in, now notice that that moves it to the left and to the right, okay? Uh, if we had a cross section that was actually drawn in the ZX plane, that would be a way to actually distribute something across that. If we made our slider negative, say if we had minimum negative 15, we could not only move something you know this way but also back this way. Okay. So again, um, move is one of those transforms. Uh, it's the most basic transform, and uh, it allows us to to make another state of the geometry by uh, displacing it with a vector. Okay. Now. Um, Another kind of thing, actually I'm going to go ahead and delete this and do a Z vector again. There we go. Okay, so I can look at this. So I've moved it. And then another transform I looked at was uh, scale. Okay, and scale, just like uh, the other transform move, takes geometry. And something interesting has happened here. Okay, you can see that this is the one we moved, the green one. And this green one is the state in which we scale, but something's happening here. It's kind of a bug. Like it seems to have scaled it in the center here. Um, and we, I wanted it to scale, you know, inside of here, right? I wanted to make a scale uh, state of this. And what happened? Well, if you look at the center of scaling, it's actually set to zero, 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 which is about right. So between here and zero, 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 right, is this is this space, and that's actually what it's been scaled to. So how would we get that to scale in the right location? Well, uh, one thing that you could use is a component called area. And I talked about this in the supplemental video that I posted on Saturday. 
And an area component takes geometry, and it, it can do curves, it can do meshes, it can do surfaces, things like that. And it returns the area in as a, as a square footage or square inches, but it also returns the centroid, which is the mathematical center of that geometry. Okay? And that works for any shape, not necessarily uh, just a polygon. It can do anything. Okay? And so what you can do is you can plug this geometry into this, and you see that, that, that uh, point appears, and that's the, that's the centroid. Okay? And if we take the centroid and plug it into the center scale, that's going to give us the proper, uh, the proper location for that new scale state. Okay. Now, what we didn't talk about is the scaling factor, which is a number, and you can control that with a number slider. Okay, so we can make a number slider. <clears throat> I'm just going to call this scale. Let's call this height. I don't do a very good job of naming these, but I really should for you guys. Okay, so scale. Now, you'll notice something about scale that needs to be explained. Uh, the, the scaling factor is a percentage, right? Um, it's essentially a, a multiplier of that dimension. So if our, uh, if our geometry, let's say, is one unit, if I take it by a scaling factor of 0.25, that's going to scale it to a quarter size, and that seems to be what, what's happened here. Uh, if I made it a uh, scaling factor of 1, it's 1 times the thing, uh, and that's 100% scale, it's the same size, okay? Um, on the assignments, I, I noticed a lot of people were, were putting parameters into it that made it seem like you were looking at it like a radius or like a diameter, okay? And it's not an actual dimension, it's a scaling factor, okay? If I wanted to scale this by twice the size, I might go in and change this to 2, and now it's twice the size, or it's one and a half times, okay? So you just have to remember that about about scaling factor, is that it's, it's a percentile, okay? If you wanted to make it uh, a scale a certain size based on the size of this, and it was it was always going to be dependent upon this geometry size, instead of putting a slider in for the factor, you could just set it to be a certain size. Uh, and uh, in this case, this is going off my screen here. <clears throat> in this case, uh, it's it's half. I could make that something like 0.667. Okay. And uh, so that if I, if I change the size of this geometry, whatever comes after it is going to be 0.667 of that. So it's dependent upon that geometry. Okay. So again, the two gotchas with scale is that it has to be, you need a centroid. You need the, the proper, you need a proper center point in order for it to be scaled. Otherwise, you can get some strange bugs. And uh, two, the scaling factor is a percentage. So those are two those are two important things. Okay, and then the last transform that I want to talk about is rotation. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, scale piece for now. Okay, so I want to do rotate. Okay, some people were doing this for the assignment. We didn't uh, we didn't describe rotate. So I do want to take a, a second to talk about rotate. And rotation, we shouldn't be surprised. Uh, it takes geometry, it takes a G, right? And uh, so we can plug some geometry into it. And it also takes uh, rotation angle in radians, and that's key. So this is another reason why we want to read these labels, because it actually takes the angle in radians. We'll talk about that in a second. And then last, it takes a rotation uh, plane. Okay, so it's looking for, uh, it, needs a, it needs an axis to, to actually rotate it around. <clears throat> so we'll look at that. Um, let's address the angle uh, first. And uh, the angle, ideally, would be, right, in this case, maybe a number slider. And there's 360 degrees uh, in an angle. Okay, so we'll just make this 0 to 360, and I'll plug this into angle. And as I scrub from 0, and you can notice that it's spinning way more than it should be. You should only get a full rotation in 360 degrees. <clears throat> What's the problem with that? Well, the problem is that it wants the angle in radians. So what do we do about that? We can go into angle, and this is very similar to processing. We actually had to do this in processing, if you remember, because it also wanted rotation in uh, radians. <clears throat> so if I go in, I can go to expression, and I can click the, actual, the expression editor, 
and you can, if you click here, you can see all the functions that Grasshopper takes. And I don't expect you guys to know all these, but, but these are roughly some of the things we were doing with processing. And there is actually a function, <clears throat> radians, that converts an angle in degrees to radians. So if we give it degrees, it returns radians. And it's a function, uh, rad, capital R-A-D, uh, of, of x. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted you guys to, uh, to do processing first, because now you understand what a function is, and you can plug this in. So we'll look, think of rad parentheses, x parentheses, okay? And a is the number here, this is the variable. So let's just do rad <coughs> a parentheses. And it says no syntax errors detected, so that's good news for us. Okay, and if I go back to <coughs> my sketch, you'll notice that if I have it here, I get a full rotation 360. Doesn't quite look like it because it's the same on all sides, but take my word for it, it's a full 360. It's a single rotation. And that's about what we want. We want to be able to control that. We, if you rotate any more than 360, it just goes around again, so that doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, one last uh, thing that, that, that may come into, uh, that may be important, is the, the rotation plane. If you have some geometry that is not rotating the way you expect it to, it might be for, because the rotation plane isn't uh, accurate. And one way to do that with this kind of geometry might be to take the center of the geometry and then plug the center in uh, for the plane. And um, that certainly doesn't hurt in this case. It doesn't seem to be necessary, but <clears throat> that might be a bug you run into. You gotta, if it's not rotating the way you want to, then you might have a problem with the uh, plane. And we'll talk more about planes in uh, Tuesday's lecture. But So these are the three basic transforms. And uh, you can do a lot of things with your geometry with these. And that's those are the ways they work. So you just have to understand what what move wants and what scale wants and what rotate wants okay and that should uh, ease you through some of the bugs um, okay that's the end of this part I will see you in part two